Welcome to another production by the Millennial Mechanical Therapist. Your hosts, Dr. Joseph Gravino and Dr. Clay Case, are two physical therapists trying to treat health issues mechanically. Listen further for patient cases, guest videos, advantages and disadvantages of the way they practice, and much more. Thanks for tuning in today. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and at our website. We hope that you learn a lot from watching this video and you come back for more. Hey everyone, I'm the Millennial Mechanical Therapist. Today I'm coming to you between commercials at the Thursday Night Football game. Uh, so if I start staring off in the distance, forgive me, there's probably a big play. Uh, today, uh, when I was going through work, I was thinking about the biopsychosocial implications uh, that each of our patients face going through any of the impairments that they're dealing with. And I recently listened to the Mechanical Care Forum episode with Dr. Gary Jacob on there. And he talked uh, a great deal about his belief of the biopsychosocial implications and uh, the way that the uh, McKenzie assessment really approaches those throughout the whole uh, episode of care, really, when you're using an MDT framework to uh, base your plan of care off of. Now, he had mentioned in that uh, episode with with Jason Ward on the mechanical care forum that using the MDT approach or the uh, at least the patient response basis for that assessment really makes the whole thing a very biopsychosocial experience although it's not perhaps the focus of that idea it's almost a uh, kind of a secondary effect from from using that patient response method uh, the rationale behind that is that any time that you use an intervention, whether it be repeated movements or a modality or any type of exercise program, uh, when you use the patient response, you start with you know a rep, a few reps of that uh, that intervention. So by doing that, you kind of have to integrate what's going on with that patient in terms of their mechanics, their symptomatic response, and really their psychological response. So the way to kind of approach that is you take your baseline, you apply that intervention, and then you recheck that baseline. Now it, that's really easily thought of as, you know, you do range of motion, you do ultrasound, you check the range of motion, is it any different? Um, same idea, check range of motion, do repeated movements, check range of motion. Well, the thing to really consider when you do that is the symptomatic and mechanical response has to follow a psychological framework because you're asking that patient uh, at least if you're doing it the appropriate way now if you don't ask their response at all that's not exactly what I'm talking about but if you do that intervention and then go how does that make you feel and they go, well, maybe I hurt a little bit more. Maybe I hurt a little bit worse. Maybe I hurt in a different spot. Maybe, uh, you know, I just feel this warmth coming on. Maybe I feel uh, like it's blowing up or something like that. You know, we've all heard a lot of different descriptions from patients that may not always make sense to us, but that's how they're describing their feelings. It's how they're uh, just somaticizing the, the, those feelings from that intervention. Uh, the problem comes in when you do your intervention. So if I say, go ahead and do 10 of those shoulder extensions, and I go, does that make you feel better? Does that make you feel worse? Does that make you feel this, that, and the other thing? You know, that can really lead down a pathway of biasing that patient in their psychological response. Now, if you leave it open-ended and you go, how does that make you feel? Did that affect the way that you're feeling? And let them just express uh, their feelings and try to you know verbalize the emotions that they're feeling and whether those emotions are <clears throat> excuse me uh, truly of a psychological nature nature or if they're a somatization of anything that they think that they're perceiving through that intervention well that inherently takes into account the biopsychosocial aspects to an extent at least of what's going on 
I mean, you're not sitting there ignoring the fact that uh, maybe they're scared to move and things like that. You know, you're gently grading their exposure to that intervention. Hopefully, if you're using this method, this patient response method, which is essentially what MDT is based on, um, you're gradually introducing some kind of stimulus and ensuring that the graded application of that stimulus is appropriate for that patient. So uh, inherently built into the MDT system, right on the assessment form, right on it, you get one extension. Then you get repeated extensions. And you can put in lying and sitting and standing, whatever on there. But right on that form, you do one. And you find out what happens. If it's not a big deal, which most of the time it's not. I mean, it's generally pretty hard to really disrupt uh, something with one gentle movement. You know, you have somebody bend one time and they're going, okay, it doesn't feel good, but I come back and I feel about the same. Um, now our patients may mention that they remember a specific time they bent forward and all of a sudden their back went out. Well, whole different story, whole different video to go through. But built in inherently in that model for the MDT approach is that graded exposure that considers, although secondarily, the biopsychosocial aspects of your interventions, as long as you do it right. So. Uh, that kind of thought process just popped in my head and you know the game's on so I'm getting a little distracted but uh, think about that guys do me a favor let me know what you think about that uh, obviously my thoughts were just in this video and I feel pretty strongly about those uh, check out that MCF episode with uh, Dr. Gary Jacob he talks about it at length you know those episodes are usually uh, about 30 minutes I think 30 to 40 minutes and a lot of times there's two of them uh, so check that out as always guys move your patients early move them often and move them to end range because that's where the magic happens <laughs>